Hello again everyone, welcome to Nowhere Videos Meat and Potatoes, the program that shows you easy recipes for great food. I'll be your host for this, pro for this edition of Meat and Potatoes, I'm Mark Johnson. Behind the camera, as, as always when I'm, uh, when I'm cooking, is Mr. Todd Hilton. And uh, tonight, I'm going to do two things. I know, a lot of you out there are saying, Gee, can you do two things at once? Can you do one thing at once? Well, we're going to find out. We're going to make some beef enchiladas. And while those are cooking, we're going to make some homemade guacamole. So sit back and relax and enjoy this edition of Meat and Potatoes, and let's get started. First thing we want to do is uh, we're going to brown our meat. It's always a good idea. Because nobody likes raw beef enchiladas, at least nobody I know. And I've got two pounds of lean ground beef. Actually, this is... 20% fat, so there'll be a little bit of a little bit of uh, fat burn off here. We're gonna get that started. Okay, we'll actually let that start to brown. And while we do that, we'll take this bag of chopped onions. Actually, before I even do that. This is one of the ingredients that we're going to use actually for both recipes today. This is our Rotel diced tomatoes and green chilies. It's the milder stuff. You can use the original if you want, if you like it a little more spicy. I'm going to go ahead and drain the juice out of this because we're going to use one can in with our meat and half of the bag of chopped onions. Uh, in with the meat to kind of flavor the beef a little bit. Okay, it's starting to brown pretty good. So not even draining these. I'm going to put about yeah, Probably going to want more for my guacamole than I am for my meat because we'll have the rotel in there anyway. Okay, we'll let that brown a little bit more before I end up actually putting the rotel in. So while we're waiting for that, get out a jar of your enchilada sauce. I like the Safeway Select mild enchilada sauce because not everybody likes it hot and spicy. Before I put any tortillas down, is I put a, layer, a thin layer of enchilada sauce on the bottom of my 13 by 9 pan, but I'm going to take And of course, you can use any any brand enchilada sauce you want. Probably take about one and a half. These are probably ten inch burrito size flour tortillas. I gotta tell you, if you're diabetic, these are not low carb by any means. Uh, you can probably, if you wanted to, if you wanted the lower carbs, you could probably use the whole wheat tortillas but since my meal is actually going to be for people other than diabetics and me because it's my birthday tomorrow as we're filming this it's the day before my birthday and actually this is going to go up to my sister's house for dinner tonight so whether they like it or not 
Anyway, um, you'll notice that you got a few gaps here. What I usually do is I just kind of I can tear off a couple pieces, small pieces, and kind of fill in some of the little gaps here. Or you can just go to the gap and go shopping if you want. Just kidding. A little, uh, a little humor there. You gotta have some humor when you're cooking, especially when I'm cooking because, well, let's face it, you know, I'm funny. Anyway, you know, let's chop up good and small here. Try not to splatter too much around. Now, a lot of people will actually uh, roll their enchiladas. To me, that's a little time consuming, so I like to layer mine. And I've actually talked to quite a few people who say, oh, I like to I layer mine too. It's like, yeah, it is. It's a lot easier in the long run. I mean, if you're short on time, and it won't take long once these go in the oven uh, to bake. I mean, usually 30 minutes, but you got to figure everything's pretty much already cooked. You're just getting the cheese and everything melted in there really good. And, and heating up the enchilada sauce on the layers so we're getting really close here on our hamburger we got a few other pieces in here still a little pink we want to make sure that hamburger is good and cooked now hopefully todd has gotten a really good shot of this this cool funky apron here this is this is a uh, a Nowhere Videos Meat and Potatoes original, just done minutes ago by Monsieur Todd, who is running the camera right now, and he did an awesome job, fantastic job of uh, printing that out on a t-shirt transfer paper and iron that baby on, and we're looking good, man. Hopefully I won't get it too dirty, because Todd wants to use it later, so... All right, we are getting really close here, folks. To save a little time, we'll just Then we're going to bring it back over the stove and just mix that rotel in a little bit better. Whew, a little warm in here. And it gives a little color too. You can't go wrong with a little color in your food. Okay, this is the part where we bring our pan over here because it's going to be a lot easier to work with and let's put a little thin layer of sauce back on top here first so I find it's easier to do that first to cover every little piece but you're gonna like I say you're gonna layer it so more is gonna come through the top there well, let's use this grab some meat sprinkle try and sprinkle it as evenly as you can Again, doesn't have to be perfect, but 
me, I'm a perfectionist, so. Okay. Then, the cheese. You probably recognize this. this isn't the same bag that I had the last time we cooked, by the way. That's long gone. This is a new bag. But I, I use the Mexican four cheese blend. I think it adds a little spice and a little, a little flavor. Then just repeat the process, layer by layer. Okay. Trying not to drop your tortillas in the garbage can. It's always, it's always a good thing. Okay. This is where those uh, individual little pieces come in handy. Covering up those little spots. And they'll bake in just rather nicely. Good, okay. And again, more meat. I, you know, I was gonna do a uh, chicken enchilada, but I figured, you know, Todd's been doing quite a bit of chicken lately, and I thought, eh, well, you know, we wanna get a little more than just chicken in this show. I mean, it is called meat and potatoes, and you know, beef is meat, so at least last time I checked it was. Um, so, we're gonna do something a little bit different this time. Actually, I have used uh, beef already in, my, in one of my shows, I guess, when I made the taco soup. I'm going to go ahead and use the rest of the meat on this layer, and then all we'll have to do on the top layer will be the tortilla, and then more sauce, and then cheese. Now it should be just about enough room at the top to where it won't bubble over too much. This one, this way we'll alternate it this time. Probably wouldn't have been a bad idea to alternate which end your whole tortilla and half tortilla went on. I didn't even think about that until I get to the last layer. We put our uh, the last layer of enchilada and cheese on the previous layer, so we're gonna put a little extra on this on top here. I got in such a got in such a hurry. Oh yeah, I did. Didn't I? I'm sure I did. Anyway, oh well. There's plenty of cheese in here. Don't worry about that. Since you don't want your uh, tortillas real crispy on that top layer, it's like we learned with noodles uh, on a previous show. Get a little extra cheese around the corners there. Cover up the tortilla as much as possible. Don't worry about using too much cheese. You can never use too much cheese. Cheese good. Man, I love to cook. 
keep telling Todd, you know, I'm going to make somebody a really great housewife one of these days. And that woman is going to be one lucky lady. She's going to have a guy that can cook big time. Okay, now we got to turn on the oven here. We're going to bake these at, uh, I'm going to say about 350. We're going to preheat it to 350. Watch it at about 20 minutes. See how melted the cheese is. Because that's pretty much going to be what you want. You're going to want your cheese nice and melted. You're not going to want it because everything's pretty much cooked already okay so you don't there's not a whole lot of cooking involved basically the only reason you're even sticking this thing in the oven is to melt the cheese and to heat up the enchilada sauce other than that it's all for show okay our oven is preheated so we're ready to put the enchiladas in so we'll do that right now okay so into the oven they go, and while they're baking, we're going to get started on the guacamole, which is one of my favorites. And you'll see why when we get it done. So uh, come on back, I'll show you how to make some really good guacamole. Alrighty then. Time to make some guacamole. This is the good stuff, folks. Get your nice, soft uh, avocados. These brand, ooh, nice sharp knife. Well, these are soft avocados, man. I'm telling you. Um, the brand name on these are Haas, H A A S. You can get them at pretty much every uh, grocery store. Push that open. Oh, that's nice. Oh, and they, they really need, they need to be soft on the inside for the, for them to mash really well. If they're not. I was actually told by my sister that you can actually microwave them if they're too hard. You can microwave them for a few seconds and soften them up a little bit. I don't think we're going to need to do that. Just scoop out the old green guts here. squeeze it right out of the shell if it's soft enough. And clean off as much of the avocado off the pit. Always make sure you got that little piece of the end of the uh, avocado out of there. When it bites into that, they're going to really have your hide. Okay, one down, five to go. Now this time of year that we're taping this probably isn't the uh, most economically good time to make fresh guacamole. These were actually on sale two for three dollars, which uh, is kind of expensive. So if they're not in the season, uh, you've got other options, but like don't buy as many. But I figure it's for a good cause, my birthday dinner. So anyway, okay, here's the last of my. Avocado scoopings going into the bowl right there. Then what you're going to want to do? Wash your hands a little bit. Ah oh, yes, the good old avocado oil used in a lot of cosmetics. See how beautiful I made my hands. <laughs> anyway. Rinse this out just a little bit. We've still got some of our hamburger grease on it. We're going to want to 
probably drain our other can of Rotel. I don't don't think I want to use all the juice from the from the Rotel in there. Just like the last can. And we're going to dump our the rest of our bag of chopped onions in there. And yeah, it's pretty much got all of them. While that's draining, we we'll take our tater masher. We're actually gonna mash our avocados. Nice and squishy. Those are pretty, pretty good mash. I got some pretty good soft ones this time. This is a good thing. You take your lemon juice, squeeze some of that in there. And what this does is it keeps it from uh, losing its its good green color. Some of that in there, a few squeezes. Doesn't hurt to, you don't have to measure that, I mean, if you don't want to, I mean. And then just kind of continue to mash it with the lemon juice in there. Get that lemon juice mixed into the avocado really good. Now some people, and I've done this myself on, on batches of it before, uh, to use as filler in here we'll use cottage cheese which is fine. You can do that if you want. I've done it before. There's nothing wrong with the taste of it. My sister-in-law, that's how she taught me how to do it and it tastes really good. And it gives it a little more consistency and a little more filling. Then we've got some garlic powder. I've used garlic powder, not garlic salt. Okay, we've got the garlic powder. I usually don't measure it out. I just... Yeah, that's probably enough. And just uh, sprinkle it in there. And then again, mix it in. Real good. And you can put a little regular salt in there if you want. You don't have to, but you can. Ah yes, the sour cream. Stuff out of the way. Okay. And like I say again, I don't really measure too much, I just a few spoonfuls of that in there. Whatever I don't use for the guacamole, I'll end up we can use on top of the enchiladas too. So, speaking of which, they should be just about done. Our enchiladas, that is. We'll check on those as soon as we get this mixed up here a little bit more. Looking good. Okay, we're going to throw our rotel with our onions in there. And again, the rotel, not only does it add the flavor, but it adds some color too. And what have we said? You can never have too much color in your food. Well, unless, of course, it all turns black, and then, well, Black's not really a color anyway, so. Ooh, this is looking good. Okay, well, looks like it's time to take our enchiladas out of the oven. Now we're gonna do that real quick. Oh, yeah. 
That's the stuff. Voila. Layered beef enchiladas. This is the good stuff, folks. And you can top it with uh, the guacamole that we've made, which we're going to show you that, too. Take a look at that. And that's good. We've already sampled that. Very good. So you can top... You can top it with a little sour cream, a little guacamole, put some chips on the side. And if somebody's got some refried beans or, or, or Spanish rice, it'll complete the meal just beautifully. episode of meat and potatoes nowhere videos meat and potatoes the program that shows you easy recipes for great food for meat and potatoes i'm mark johnson and behind the camera is mr todd hilton good taters good meat with grief let's eat